shall we start sir sure sir we can start okay sir with your kind permission we are starting this one good morning to all welcome you all for a national level webinar series to the artisan 20 we are in the 14th day session 26 today we are beginning with the snake bite management in ayurveda are we strong at this era of anti venom by dr benil p sir the professor department of agratantra and vyavahar ayurveda vpsc ayurveda college kotekal kerala welcome you sir let's begin for the welcome myself dr jean kanolli the assistant professor department of pg studies in samita siddhanta svm ayurvedic medical college pg research center ikkal first and foremost in my prevalence a welcome to the blessing of his holiness shriman niranjana pranav swarupi guru mahanta swami ji as event started with the swami ji blessing it continued till today welcome you swami ji i welcome to the our svm vp sangha chairman shri mg patan shetty sir secretary dr shri dilip devgir kar sir all the board members of the svm vp sangha for providing an opportunity and being with us for the rudyan madison 20 welcome you sir i welcome to the our today's speaker Dr. Benil P. B. Sir, the Professor, Department of Agricultural and Rural Sciences, Bihar Ayurveda, V. P. H. V. Ayurveda College, Kottayam, Kerala. Sir is going to continue the talk on snake bite management in Ayurveda. Are we strong at the, this era of anti venom? Welcome, you sir, for the today's session. Thank you, sir. I welcome to the. Thank you, sir. I welcome to the our event president, Dr. K. C. Dal, sir, the principal and the CMO, S. V. Ayurveda Medical College, P. G. Research Center, Ikkal. for his kind hearted care and being the backbone and being with us for the since of the starting of the webinar for the advertisement 20 welcome you sir i welcome to the event organizer dr lk patak sir the associate professor in the hod department of agratantra eva vyavahar ayurveda svm arith medical college ilkal welcome you sir for the organizing the national level webinar series for the advertisement 20 i welcome to the event coordinator dr shrimati manjula dr shrimati manjula associate professor department of agratantra and vyavahar ayurveda svm ayurveda medical college ilkal for a technical care taker of the rudyan madison 20 and conducting the national level webinar series rudyan madison 20 welcome you madam i welcome to the all the teaching staff and the non teaching staff pg and ug scholars internees of the svm ayurveda medical college pg research center ilkal for supporting and being the part of our today's national level webinar series rudyan madison 20 welcome you all i welcome to the staff of agratantra and vyavahar ayurveda VPHV Ayurveda Medical College, Kottayam, Kerala, for their support and being the part of the today's national level webinar series, Rudyan Madison 20. Welcome you. I welcome all the teachers, PG UG scholars of other institutions, especially VPHV Ayurveda Medical College, Kottayam, Kerala, SVM Ayurveda Medical College, Kilkal, participants watching in the YouTube for being the part and participating in the national level webinar series one, Rudyan Madison 20. Welcome you all the participants. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Now I request to Miss Aishwarya P. Havaldar, third-year UG scholar, for introducing the today's guest speaker. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yes, please. Good morning, everyone. Myself, Aishwarya Havaldar, from third-year BMS. It's my great privilege to introduce today's speaker, Dr. Benil P. B. Sir is presently working as professor at V. P. H. V. Ayurveda College, Kottayam. and has sir has 16 years of experience in teaching sir has completed his bms in government ayurvedic college tripunitura Trip okay. and sir has completed his md in dravyaguna vignana from government ayurvedic college tiruvananthapuram and md in agaratantra from vpsv ayurvedic college kotakkal sir has completed his post graduate diploma in medical law and ethics from national university of advanced legal studies in kochi we grateful to have you here sir thank you over to you sir 
Thank you. Thank you for the kind words of introduction. And uh, first of all, let me congratulate uh, SVM uh, Ayurveda Medical College, ILKAL, for organizing such a wonderful uh, national seminar or national webinar. Uh, and it was very aptly named as Hridayavaran. Let all the knowledge that we get from this uh, national seminar uh, Avaran as our, our hearts together. And I personally thank the principal, uh, Dr. Casey Dasar, for taking this opportunity. It was a very, very uh, important step. Uh, it, it, is, it can be called as a milestone in the field of Agatha Dandara because nobody has conducted such a, a national webinar so far with uh, ranging subject ranging from almost the entire syllabus of Agatha Dandara. Thank you very much, sir. And I uh, also thank uh, the organizing secretary, Dr. Kanoli, sir. Manjula ma'am and Patar sir for uh, conducting this uh, seminar. So good morning and welcome one and all. And uh, let me share my screen. I hope my screen is visible to one and all. Yes, sir. It's a visible, sir. Thank you. So, welcome to uh, Vaidyaragna P.S. Varya Ayurveda College, Kotagal. And uh, we have passed our centenary year uh, to two years back. And uh, paying our homage to the great visionary and the founder of Ayurveda Shala Kotagal, Vaidyaragna, Dr. P.S. Varya. And uh, coming to snake bite, straight away to the subject. Uh, snake bite is considered as the neglected tropical diseases by the World Health Organization. And it is considered under the category A of neglected diseases. Because the social impact of, from snake bite is huge, we have got millions of cases of envenomation all over the world with high mortality, but still we are not having any international program to uh, prevent or to bring an update in, in the field of uh, snake bite management, even though we have a international document on that, but still many of the members uh, countries are still uh, are uh, not completely obliging to it because of some problems uh, arising from that. So high mortality, but still it is neglected. Now, uh, coming to the Ayurveda and the snake bed management, we know that during the medieval period, we consider uh, as the golden era of Ayurveda, that is the uh, medieval period is actually subdivided into two, the early medieval period and late medi medieval period, and it extends from 6th to 16th and beyond, because uh, there are certain other works that came up after the 16th century are also considered under medieval period. So the medieval period actually showed a high uh, rate of uh, published works in the field of Agatandra, that is in the field of, uh, in the commentaries, in, in new, new treatises being arised, new lexicons being arised, and all these contributed to the uh, development of Ayurveda, and especially Agadendra. Because why I call uh, Agadendra as uh, more important is that, you know, when you look at the travelogues that have been written by the international <laughs> travelers, travelers who visited India during the medieval period, we can see that their references are actually all pertaining to Agadendra because they are all highlighting the role of uh, the snake bite management, which was magical at that time. Because you know we don't have much development in the field of modern medicine in snake bite management during that period. But we had a very evolved and very successful snake bite management prevalent at that stage. So Agatha Dandara can be considered as the torchbearer mm -hmm. of Indian medicine at that time. It still is, but we are, we are neglecting Agatha Dandara to some, some extent. So we had a, a very good uh, uh, an example or a very good uh, instance uh, that Alexander the Great, when he invaded the India uh, to conquer India, to expand his empire, he came and he traveled and he fought through all the small kingdom that present in the Gangetic Plains. And we know that the Gangetic Plains are notorious for poisonous and venomous snakes. And you know many of his, uh, soldiers were envenomated by snakes and many of them actually died out of it. So uh, he was very much worried about it. And he was very surprised to see the treatment system that was prevalent in India at that time for snake bite. 
and he insisted that by an order that all the soldiers that are being bitten by snake during any of the war in India should be treated only by the Indian physicians and not by the phys physicians he brought from Greece uh, along with him. So that is the, uh, the high uh, uh, level of uh, the snake bite management, the practicality of uh, snake bite management uh, of India existed at that time. So um, there is even a, a, a short uh, uh, story about he himself being bitten by a snake. I, I, it was a viper, but you know uh, it, it was not given much importance in history. But somewhere, some uh, historians have also uh, recorded that he himself had an, an encounter with a, a snake and venomation, and he also uh, got treated and cured from. Uh, uh, the snake, but snake and venomation with the help of Ayurveda. So this happened in 326 BC. So from that time onwards, Ayurveda is actually uh, an impersonated to the uh, contributions of Agatandra. So Agatandra is definitely the torchbearer of Indian medicine. Now we move on to some of the details pertaining to Kerala because we had a tradition of uh, of snake bite management evolved in Kerala. So I will be hand highlighting a little bit more on that. So uh, it is mythologically, it is said that Kerala originated um, uh, law, uh, mythologically by the Lord Parashurama uh, uh, because you know some of the Brahmins who dwelled in, uh, in the southern parts of India, he, they came to Lord Parashurama and complained that they don't have uh, enough land uh, to, to live with or to cultivate, to, agri to agriculture and develop. So they, they came to Lord Parashurama with a complaint and Lord Parashurama, what he did was he, he took his ax and he threw from one side, from the tip of the Indian subcontinent towards the north. And he said that wherever uh, this ax will fall, from there the ocean will recede and you will get a land and you can use that land for uh, all your purposes for agriculture, to make your home, to make a living, you can use that for your livelihood. And like that, he threw the ax and uh, it fell down, fell uh, from somewhere in the north and the ocean receded and they got some land. Now, the, they started dwelling in that land, but the problem was that, you know, it was full of salinity because, you know, ocean itself is saline. So as it receded, the soil also became saline and it, it became very infertile that these people could not make a sustained living in this area because of the salinity. So they came again to Lord Parashurama and he, they complained again that, you know, we, we are not, unable to do any cultivation here. The soil is very uh, infertile and it is of no use. So uh, Lord Parashurama, what he said, did was, you know, he went to Patala, uh, Patala Lok, and he met the serpent king Ananda, and he pleaded him that uh, he should give some um, some solution for this. And what uh, he did was that, uh, and the Nagaraja gave some serpents, and uh, he sent those uh, serpents along with Lord Parashurama to Earth. And when they came to Earth, they uh, neutralized the salinity by their venom. It is said so. And uh, it is also said that, you know, the forked tongue of a snake is actually, they, they are putting it out to take the salinity that is uh, uh, actually present in the soil. This is a mythological explanation, but actually it is not so. It actually, it is to catch up the pheromones that are there to, to catch the prey, to identify the prey. So this is very important. So uh, like that, the, the salinity of the land was lost. And also the soil became very fertile. So uh, this resulted in what we call as the lush green rainforest that we see throughout the Kerala and the Western uh, Ghats. So the, this rich forest, they gave an abode for the snakes to breed, develop, evolve. And we had a, a, the largest biodiversity of snakes, of poisonous as well as non-poisonous snakes in this Western Ghat forest, the rainforest of Western Ghat. So it extends from the southern tip of Kerala up to north from Karnataka, Goa to Maharashtra and some, some parts beyond that also. So this large belt of green greenery and the lush forest gave the greatest diversity of all living beings and also that of snakes. 
So they, they being so much numerous in number, there is always a chance for human encounters and there is always a chance for envenomation to human from these poisonous snakes. So this is something that, that necessitated the different regions in India to develop their own traditional uh, snake bite management system. Kerala evolved one such system. If you go to Karnataka, we can see a very beautiful uh, uh, management strategy being evolved in, in the areas that is adjoining the, uh, the Western Ghats, the Sahyadri. Then even if you go for Goa and the Kongan Belt also had some traditional snake bite treatment strategies developed. Even in Maharashtra, we have got. So each region has developed their own unique and very effective system of management of snake bite, man, snake bite. And all these contributed to what is known as the Indian system of uh, management of snake bite, because in basic principle, they all belong to our uh, Samhidas and Siddhandas. But uh, in each region, they have they evolved to a, a, a catering to the needs of that particular locality and utilizing the uh, what is known as the resources, the local resources of plant and minerals available in that area. So in, in Kerala, we got a group of texts that are pertained to uh, Agatha Tandra that was evolved here. In If you go to Karnataka, we have got the beautiful works like Hagendra Manidarpana, which is somewhat like biblical proportion when we come to um, snake bed management and all. So in every region, we have developed different systems of uh, snake bed management. So as, uh, as the uh, humans dwelled along with these snakes in the forest, the encounters increased, envenomations increased, death rate increased. So what they, they, there was a fear uh, factor that developed in the mind of the people. And for that reason, they, uh, they developed, they segregated their land into different portions. Some portions they allowed only for the, uh, for uh, not to be disturbed and they, they kept L only for the dwelling of the snakes. And these uh, are later developed as the sacred grooves. And in Malayalam, it is called as the Sarpa Kava like that. Now in, in all the different regions, we have got such sacred grooves that are being developed and they have been kept un, uh, untouched for the, because they are only meant for the snakes and not for humans. So you humans you usually do not go there. And to make that uh, that but that rule, that unwritten rule more uh, strong, what they did was that they gave temples over there in the name of you know Sarpakal and all. So it, it 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 became a sacred thing, so that you know the local people will not enter that area and they get bitten by the snakes. So in Kerala, we have got uh, two uh, major streams of. Um, Naga Aradhana or uh, uh, streams that are available. One is the Mannarashala temple that is uh, situated towards the uh, uh, southern part of Kerala. And towards the central part, we have got what is known as the Pambume Katamana. And these two, uh, uh, that is actually called as a um, regions, actually had a, a big temple associated with them. But more than that, they earlier used to give treatment for snake bite in this area. But now it has been given up to what is known as only for the uh, divine uh, temple that is being present over there. So these are actually the traditional systems of treatment in Kerala actually had some roots being linked to these two temples or temple traditions that are situated in, in Kerala. Now in Kerala, uh, if you look at the Kerala traditions, Kerala traditions and contributions of Kerala to Ayurveda, we can see that there are three important fields where we had a very good contribution. One is in Kaumara Britya, because it is the very, very vast works and very vast classification of Visarpa. That is the only example that we can show towards the development of Kaumara Britya. Secondly, uh, we, we also had uh, some contributions in the field of Panjagarma, the variety of Panjagarma, uh, being done, uh, Panjagarma, uh, different types of kiris and all being developed uh, in the field of Panjagarma is also a very good contribution of uh, Kerala uh, tradition. And uh, apart from that, the major contribution is in the field of Agatandra, because in Agatandra we had uh, 
the big volume of works that are being done. And uh, we, we can show up uh, in Kerala Vishachagilsa, it is said that there are seven authentic texts that is a, a, a person who is practicing Agatandra should definitely follow or study. And these are enlisted as the seven authentic texts, which includes Vishanarayaniya, Uddisha, Utpala, Haramegala, Lakshanamrada, Kalavanjana, and Ashtanga Hridaya. So in anybody who is going to learn snake bite management in Kerala should study these seven texts. Now, from these texts, uh, later evolved uh, three very important works uh, and these are the Prayoga Samuchya, Vishavaidya Josniga, and Kriya Kaumadi. Now, these three forms the backbone of the treatment systems that evolved in Kerala, especially the Vishachagilsa Sampradaya of Kerala is based on these three works. Among this, the third work is actually a compilatory work, which is actually took references from the about two, but the uh, earlier two ones are actually having some personal contributions from the authors, which are very practically oriented. So if you look at the advantages of Kerala Vishachikilsa Sampradaya, you know, apart from the, uh, the treatment modalities that are detailed in our Samhita, uh, if you look at our Samhita, we say that the concept of Vega is having the much importance. You know, the stages of the disease or stages of envenomation are determined by the uh, uh, stage of Vega. So in which stage or which dadu the poison is being lodged, it will show a particular type of symptoms. And based on that, the treatments have to be adopted by the physician. But actually, the, in a case like an emergency case like uh, snake bite envenomation, it is very difficult practically, practically to ascertain the vega in which this particular poison is taken because it is very practically uh, impractical because we have uh, um, we have asked many of the traditional Vishavadhyaya regarding this and they all said that you know it is very very impractical and it is not possible to identify uh, the particular vega because you know we may we might get some lectionas but you know or the, the thing is that in one vega that uh, vega, lectionas of that particular vega will encroach with that of mix up with the uh, lectionas of the previous vega. Suppose if the, the, the poison is in the mamsa dadu, it will show the lectionas of mamsa dadu. Along with that, it will also show the lectionas of recta dadu as well as the rasa dadu. So in that, we cannot, we, we cannot say that it, it, this particular uh, visha has reached a particular uh, the vega. It is very practically difficult. So in that, uh, the most uh, needy and the most uh, uh, handy technique is to go for the symptomatic approach. Uh, and that is the highlight of the Keralia Vishajikil text, like Vishavaidi Jolsniga and Prayoga Samsha, which details the entire uh, snake bed management in a sympt symptomatic approach. You look at the symptoms and you treat according to the text. So that is very, uh, very handy technique. And it also gives some easy to use methods. Very few medical uh, herbs are being used and very few techniques are being very easy and easily available drugs. You know, uh, uh, all these treatment modalities incorporate herbs that are seen in and around uh, our locality and easily available. We don't have to, but now the situation is changing, but still it is highly effective and very time-tested remedies, it still holds very good. And also it develops some special speciality modules or special modes of application of medicine, which is not seen in any other system. And this is what I am going to highlight in this particular presentation. So uh, some of the very potent formulation was we still use in the field of uh, snake bite management is Bilwa Diagada, as we all know, it is the references in Ashtanga Hridaya Uttarasthana. We modified that, the modified form of Vishavilwadi, which is called as the Vishavilwadi, is available in uh, the Malayalam text, which is known as the Vishavilwadi. So this Vilwadi, as we know that it has got uh, uh, implications in different sorts of diseases. You know, it, it, is, it is the, as the philosophy says that Bujanga, Ludo, Unduru, Vrishchigadir, Vishujiga, Ajirna, Garajaresha. So not, not only it is being suitable for all types of envenomations, it is also suitable for Ajirna. 
uh, Vishujika. These are some other types of, uh, we may call it as infectious diseases, or it may call it as some other type of diseases based on the uh, AMA and the Agni Mandya that is associated with it. So it has got wide application. So along with that, we modified that Vilva Diagada by adding three more drugs and we made it as Vishwa Vilva Diagada, which will be suitable for all types of Vishwa conditions. So that is very important, which is very having, uh, this particular formulation is having a very good practical application in all sorts of envenomation, however severe it may be. Now, three other very important formulations are the Jeeva Rakshagada, Tarunabhaskara Gada, and Mrida Sanjeevana Gada. These three are herbal mineral preparations and are being used very effectively in the management of uh, snake bite. In fact, in the acute management of snake bite, that should be highlighted because Jeeva Raksha, Tarunabhaskara, and Mrida Sanjeevana are given in the first stage of, uh, uh, of the poisoning when the patient is brought unconscious to the Vishavaidya. He will, give, he will give some measures to give him consciousness and straight away he will give any of these medicines depending upon the condition of the patient. So that much effectiveness was produced by these, form <clears throat> these formulations, sorry. Now, uh, we had a tradition in Kotakel and this is the charitable hospital under Ayurveda Shala Kotakel. And this used to give free treatment uh, for all disease conditions. And what you see on the left of this building, that, that uh, tiled building that you see on the left, is used to be the Visha ward of this particular hospital. So there we used to give treatment to all types of Visha treatment, but it is unfortunately closed now because of some uh, other issues. And uh, uh, we used to post our UG students as well as the PG scholars uh, during the night uh, to this center because they will go there in the evening and uh, through whole night, they will see all the procedures, the patient being brought during the night, how they are managed, how to use medicines, how to use labor, how to uh, use the preliminary uh, measures, everything they learn from, uh, from uh, experiencing this here. But unfortunately, it is closed. But now this hospital, this block of this hospital is now turned to the Museum of Ayurveda Shala. But a new hospital is also there. A new hospital is there adjoining it. And uh, now this Vishavad is actually uh, taking only some bloodletting procedures uh, like Prachana or Jalogajar, and only is being done there. No other uh, snake bite management is being done. And that is a great loss to uh, Kerala Vishachakilsa. So this is the plight of, uh, so till the 1950s, 60s, up to 80s, we had a very high time of, for uh, Kerala Vishajigil, so traditional Vishajigil practices, uh, especially because in those times, the modern medicine uh, didn't have much effective uh, treatment modalities to control the envenomation. So many a times, the traditional Vishajigil had uh, uh, upper hand than the modern meditation. So when we interviewed some of the Vishavaidyas uh, of yesterday years, uh, in, in last year, there was one reference given by one of the Vishavaidya that, you know, in Trivandrum, that's the capital of Kerala, uh, there is a medical college, which is one of, considered as the, one of the oldest medical college in, in, in Kerala. And uh, it is uh, very famous and it is it had all the specialities and all. But in earlier periods, in the 60s, 70s, uh, they used to refer the snake bite cases to a Vishavaidya that who was living nearby because they couldn't manage, because they didn't have medicines at that time. So by the advent of uh, uh, snake anti-venom by 1960s by Calmet, and it, it came, it was refined later, and we now get what is known as the uh, snake uh, venom uh, and is serum polyvalent in lyophilized form. Now, this is the most effective form of uh, snake uh, and is snake venom. Earlier, we used to have the liquid form, which, was, which had many different problems because of the shelf life is one issue. Secondly, it had, uh, uh, you know, uh, tissue reactions because due to the presence of proteins. So the different newer techniques that evolve like uh, the electro, uh, electrolytic uh, purification, then complete protein removal, and all these things, the membrane filtration, 
everything gave boost to the uh, anti-venom development. And now the, the development of anti-venom, the now used anti-venom is actually having a very good potency and it has tremendously reduced the uh, mortality from uh, snake bite. So that is a very great intervention. So with the advent and introduction of anti-snake venom, now the traditional Vishal Chikilsa has been sidelined to a greater extent. So this is the event, the milestone, from which the decline of the, uh, the traditional Vishal Chikilsa practices started. So um, as we all know that uh, venom is having a different, uh, it's a mixture of proteins, non-proteins and min, uh, some metal ions. So as a anti-venom is being an antibody that is created in a, the body of another animal like a horse and they generate the antibodies against each and every protein that is present in the snake venom. And when we inject them, the antigen antibody interaction will take place and the antigen will be neutralized. The proteins or the venomous proteins present in the, ven uh, in the body freely circulating will be neutralized. So one thing to remember here is that when we use anti-venom, snake anti-venom, it will neutralize only the venomous venom that is freely circulating in the body. All the venom and venomous proteins which are bound to any of the receptors will not be affected by any of these uh, anti uh, anti antibody present in the anti-venom. So this is one uh, drawback of anti-venom because if the patient being brought to hospital had elapsed some hours, then much of the proteins will be bound to the uh, receptors in different cells. So in that uh, instance, uh, if you are giving anti-venom, it will neutralize the circulating anti-venom, but the already, uh, already bound uh, uh, the proteins will not be affected or removed or neutralized by the anti-venom. So this is a chance or an opportunity for the traditional Vishajigrisa Sampradaya to revive. Okay. Now, uh, if you say about uh, anti-venom, so anti-venom is currently the most uh, effective snake bite management strategy as per the modern medicine. And we also admit that this is the most effective because it directly neutralizes the antigen or the snake venom proteins. Now, one thing to remember is that, now this is the metabolic pathways in our body. Don't bother about reading it. I just want to show the complexity of the situation. See, these much of uh, metabolic pathways are being run in each and every cell of our body in minute by minute, second by second, it is going on. See, I just want to give you an idea that, you know, just look at the different, each one of these color, color patterns that you see, sorry. Each one of the color patterns that you see actually represents a particular pathway. So we have got the blue colored one, which is a diff one type of pathway. We have got the purple one, we have got the red one. Each represents different pathway. But I just want you to concentrate on the interconnections between these systems. See, this is one thing that we have to be very, very, very uh, working upon in the coming future. Because, you know, our uh, in our system, different metabolic pathways are communicating with each other. That means that our body, one particular metabolic pathway can influence another pathway. So if you say that by snake and venomation, the snake proteins, which are antigens, uh, which will bind to one of the cells receptors, and it will have its pharmacological effect in the cell, some disruptions will be there, some disruptions of the bi biochemical pathways will be there. But there is always a hope that we can revive that or we can intervene in that particular uh, biochemical pathway through another route. That is also very important. We can strengthen the other pathways which will influence this pathway and we can actually bring that particular pathway to normalcy if we intervene with the right medicines at the right time. Now, this is where the importance of our science or the traditional Vishajigilsa practices come. And this is where we had a great opportunity that to intervene and to develop our system again, to rejuvenate our Vishajigilsa Sampradaya in the coming years. Okay. So we know that phytoremediation or the phytochemicals that are present in our medical, uh, in our medicinal plants 
can actually bring down what is shown in the picture is to bringing down the drawbacks or the complications that arose from the use of antivenom but also it can act against the biochemical interruptions that are produced by the snake venom on our biochemical process that is also very important so we have got a, uh, we have got studies that shows that many of the phytochemicals are actually uh, directly neutralizes the uh, phospholipase A2 present in the snake venom. We have got different studies. Many of the medicinal plants are already studied and well studied. So we can directly incorporate that studies into our, uh, in, in, in our, into our system of treating snake bites. So uh, this is a new area that we are again venturing into. So we had uh, a different, uh, many important drugs that are being mentioned, especially in Kerala Vishalikulsa Sampradaya. One is known as the Ishwari or Aristolokia Indica, the root of which is being used for as an antidote for singly. It is being used singly as an antidote for uh, snake bite management. This, this particular drug is also used in, in Karnataka also, Karnataka region, where traditional Vishavadyas have used this drug very much, very effectively. We have in uh, Califa Indicas another uh, uh, herb, which is also used, Vitania somnifera is being used. So we can come up with any number of examples, but the importance is that we have to identify where this is going, where the active principles of these drugs are going to act, interfere in the biochemical pathways. That is the place where we have to intervene. Okay. Now, uh, coming again back to our uh, Samhita, where um, the Charaga has explained uh, beautifully the Chandurvim Shadivakrama, the 24 modalities of curing snake bed. And this is very important. It is very comprehensive. It includes everything, right from the acute management to the resuscitation of the patient, giving the first aid measures, and even the very specific and special treatment modalities to be adopted. All these are incorporated in these four 24 modalities. This is the uh, this is the entire Chigilsa Sutra for uh, any type of poisonous or venomous interaction. Now, as, as we can see, there are measure, measures of resuscitation. We know that uh, all these treatment modalities that are being uh, dealt here, which has been given in centuries ago. So we don't have any other uh, modern techniques of resusc resusc resuscitating the patients. So for that, we have to use some crude methods like the Nasyanjan and Pradamana. Uh, where in which it is actually the irritation that is being produced onto the uh, vast nerve innervation over the mucosa of the nasal cavity. So whenever any any of the any of any of the uh, a foreign matter like tishna drevya like the maricha or pipali shundi being given, you know it will irritate and the patient will get out of the unconscious state. That is one. Similarly, we use for the nerve innervation that are seen in the mucosa. The, the conjunctive around the conjunctive, that is the second one. And thirdly, we had the Pradhamananasya, that is the Churnanasya, it is the most Tishna of all. They, they are also capable of bringing up the patient who is unconscious. So this is, these are, we, we may consider it as very primitive, but these are the only ways that could be uh, used at that time for a patient to be, to regain his consciousness, because that was very important uh, in treatment. Okay. So uh, these measures not only had um, a single purpose of regaining the consciousness, but it had some other uh, treatment therapeutic benefits also that we come to in the later side. Okay, now we, we also had the measures of first aid, uh, the Arishta Bandana, the, uh, that is the tourniquet binding, the Utkartana or the uh, incision or uh, incision of the bite side, Nishpedana, the skewing, Achushana, Agni Karma, Siddha Veda, these methods, you know, all these methods are now contraindicated by the WHO because it had a potential to uh, give complications to the patient. Okay. But this is the place where WHO and its member states are actually uh, are not conceding to uh, this particular protocol. Because uh, in, in developing countries like India, we know that in our roads, if a patient is having Envenomated, 
and he, he has to be moved to a hospital. That hospital will be maybe 30, 40 kilometers away and with all the traffic in our road and taking a, a person in, in, into that particular vehicle and driving and to the hospital, it will take hours. By the time the patient will have all the pro protein, proteins of the venom binding to different receptors and has its own effect on the body, which may not be able to revive the patient. That is very, very crucial. So when we go for one conference where a WHO representative actually presented uh, for the first time this protocol, and he's, when they said the, about these things, that is to be not to be done, not to, to tie the tunicate, not to cauterize it, not to um, suck the bite side, everything. You know, all the uh, doctors working in the rural area, they were very angry and they were shouting that, what nonsense that you are saying? Because in a place like India, where uh, all these snake bites are happening in the rural setup, and uh, it, it will take hours for one person to reach the specialty hospital, how can this be possible? So even though they came, it up, came up with uh, this as a, a recommendation, Many in, in India, actually, even though they will also adhere to the WHO protocol, inside, deep inside their mind, they are saying that that is not the right thing because the lives of humans are precious. We have to be safe, save them. Okay. Now, we come to treatment modalities. This is the area that I want to explain a little more because this is the area where we have the most advanced of uh, the technologies that have been utilized by our Vishajikil Sasambradaya. So as a treatment also, we are using Nasya, Anjana, Dhuma, Leha, Aushada, Prashamana. These are all that are being dealt in our uh, Chaturvim Shadiubakrama. So I want to highlight some of the points here regarding the Nasya, Anjana, and Dhuma. So we know that uh, in, in all the treatment system, all the, all the specialties of Ayurveda, we are using chiefly our oral route of drug administration. And we know that oral route of drug administration has got some disadvantages. And first thing is that, you know, it will take some time for the drug to disintegrate inside our stomach before getting absorbed. So that is a time lag is there. And after the absorption of the drug, the drugs are straight away taken up to the, by the portal system to the liver. And the liver has, you know, has a capability of metabolizing anything and everything come its way. So it will metabolize and it will add some functional groups into that molecules and the function of that particular molecule is being lost. So we are losing a lot of therapeutic effect of that particular drug. Then after that, it reaches the uh, systemic circulation. It will take another some time to travel and reach the target site where it can uh, bring its effect onto the body system. So all, all together, the oral route is not an ideal one, especially when you are managing an emergency condition like snake bite management. So in that, in that, for considering that reasons, you know, if you look at the um, the treatment modalities that are being explained in Agatandra, we can see that it, it has given more importance to Nasya and Janandol, you know, and even when they say about the formulations they say that this formulation can be used as Nasya, Anjana, it can be used as Duma, if you want to use as Lebana, you can even take it internally also. So such a vast uh, way of modes of application of the drug has been given. The freedom is to the physician who treat that particular case. Because, you know, depending upon the graveness or the severity of the envenomation, the physician may have to change the route of administration may have to change the form of administration, may have to change the vehicle, may have to give the, uh, change the timing of the medicine and all. So everything up depends upon the condition of the patient and how well the physician just uh, tracks this and he just gives, gets an idea about what is happening in the inside the body of the patient. So uh, as Nasya, we know that, you know, the nasal mucosa, we said, already said that, you know, it has got very vast nerve innervation. Similarly, it also has a vast capillary network. And this capillary network is an ample opportunity for drug absorption. We can bypass the liver and we can take up medicines through the capillaries because we have got very thin endothelium layer and the, and the mucous membrane is very thin here with very, 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 very micron level. So very easily the drugs will pass through it and we can bypass the liver. At the same time, you know, it is very close to our brain. 
So whenever uh, the, the poison crosses the blood-brain barrier and it reaches the brain, you know, it is very difficult for curing the disease. Okay. So this is one way of utilizing uh, the, the parenteral roots. Maybe it cannot be called as strictly as a parenteral root, but uh, unconventional roots, we can call it that. Unconventional roots other than the oral root in, in delivering the Vishachikitsa uh, drugs. Similarly, we have what Anjana. So if you look at the pathways that we uh, that I highlighted here, see there is conjunctival uh, absorption and the drug can reach the systemic circulation. So if a patient comes unconscious, uh, there is a need to give medicine. So we can use this route also. And also there is a direct absorption from the cornea. Corneal absorption is also there for local effects and all. So these, these are the unconventional routes of drug administration. So the uh, problems of oral drug administration, we have already said, but you know, uh, the first pass metabolism that is happening in the liver that it uh, just uh, metabolizes and removes everything that comes into its uh, site. Okay, now uh, along with that, you know, I, I just want to highlight one important aspect is that of uh, the pitta, you know, uh, if you look at all the specialities of, uh, of Ayurveda, nowhere you can see that, you know, Pitta is being used as a medicine or a mode of, uh, or as a vehicle or a mode of grinding or a Bhavana Dravya or anywhere, anywhere we cannot see. Because all, all everywhere we have, can have a, a Quada, Swarasa type of Bhavana is being given. But in, only in Vishra Chikilsa, we can see very particular uh, substances. One is the Pitta, second is the urine. Uh, mutra, which is not being seen in any other. In Manasega, we can see, Manasega, we can see, but in no other uh, diseases, the Mutra is being used. So these, these two things have some something very peculiar about it. And on analyzing, what we can see is that, you know, Pitta, uh, different sources of Pitta are being used in, uh, in Vishachikilsa. That is, Go Pitta is there. Uh, from goat pitta is used, from dog it is used, from peacock, from bull, from wild boar, many sources are being set. Okay, even from fish that they are using. Okay, so the, if you analyze the contents of a, uh, of a pitta, it is mainly com com coming, uh, is the cholic acid, the bile acids and the bile salts. So the important ones are the taurocholic acid, ketocholic acid, like that, these uh, bile acids are present. Now we know, we have studied the role of bile acids in, while in the fat metabolism or fat absorption. We know that they have got the surfactant property that it will reduce the su surface area to the uh, minimum by reducing the particle size. And that, that will help in the absorption of the molecule. And similarly, it has some, some uh, surface tension is being reduced to the minimum. Uh, surfactant property is the most important one. So in fat absorption, what the, what the, the bile salts will do is that, you know, they will attach to the surface of them, or surface of the uh, lipid, and it will make it uh, easily pass through the uh, cell membrane. This is a very important aspect. And one of the most important aspect regarding the bile salt is that it can bind to both uh, fat soluble as well as water soluble substances. Or it will bind to hydrophilic substance as well as hydrophobic substance. So it is, it, it is known as the amphivalent property of this bile salt. It is very useful in delivering fat soluble as well as water soluble drugs across cell membrane. So it can be easily passing through the cell membrane and the drug will reach inside our uh, cells and it will have its effect. Just so, okay. So what happens is that if you mix any drug with a bile acid, what happens is that two, two things can be achieved. One is it will enhance the absorption of the drug. And secondly, it will enhance the bioavailability of the drug. So we, you know that as you see, the right of your screen is the intact mucous membrane, sorry, plasma membrane. So the plasma membrane has a lipid bilayer. So lipid is seen inside and you can see the proteins in the purple on, on either side. Now, when we treat, or when, when it comes in contact with the bile acid, what will happen is that it will, its arrangement will be like, as you see on the left side of your picture. See, all that, uh, that uh, symmetrical arrangement is being lost. You can see that there are large spaces in between the lipid layer. 
And these large uh, spaces will allow the entry of large drug molecules through the cell membrane into inside the cell. So this is one of the easiest way of imparting drugs across the plasma membrane into the cell interior. That is why we have used pitta as a bhavana dravya or as an ingredient in many of the agara. We have to think about it very carefully. Also, when you say that, you know, when the brain, the visha has having the vevai, tikshna, and sushma guna, which will enable it to pass through any pores and it can reach any part of the body, including the brain. And we know that the peculiarity of the brain is the blood brain barrier, that it will selectively permit anything to pass through and reach the brain. But the visha has the peculiarity to cross that. So, in, in, in case of blood brain barrier, or, or when the the poison has reached and it has the effect on the, on the nervous system, then we have to have drugs that will uh, convey that particular drug molecules across the brain barrier into the brain. For that also, uh, pitta or the bile acid has got a very good role. We know that the, the particular blood brain barrier is due to the presence of the tight membrane, tight junctions produced by the, uh, the supporting cells in the nervous system like the the uh, astrocytes and, and uh, the peris, uh, like, like that, more, that particular cells will be forming a tight junction apart from the endothelium. So it has got a double uh, layer around each vesicle, each uh, vessel that will not permit anything to pass through and reach the brain. So this is another important factor in case of Vishachigilsa that we can cross the blood brain barrier with the help of. Uh, bile acid. So by coupling it with bile acid, any drug can reach, uh, reach the brain or cross any barrier and reach. This is way, way the most important thing that has been taken care of by the Acharya while developing the formulations uh, or drug delivery in case of Agatandra. And it is for this sole reason that in many Agatha that we are seeing this, this Pitta as an ingredient. We have got the Sanjeevan Agatha. Uh, mentioned in um, Ashtanga Sangraha. We have got Maheshwar Agada mentioned in Ashtanga Sangraha. We have got Vajadi Agada. We got Prajabati Agada. All these are containing either uh, one form of bile acid, either as bile itself or as the bile, bile biliary calculator, the so called as the Gorojana. It is also having the same similar property. So this is very, very crucial uh, in case of. Um, uh, the Agada preparations. So uh, this technique has been now utilized in different um, medical uh, kind of, uh, medical drug delivery systems in modern medicine. See, this, as you see, is a nasal spray containing bile acid coupled along with insulin. Now, insulin we don't need to give as an uh, 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 injection with a hypodermic needle. We can uh, convey insulin into our body through uh, bile acid coupled insulin nasal spray. As he reaches the, the vast network of capillaries in our nasal epithelium, along with the uh, bile acid, it will easily pass and reaches the uh, uh, blood and it will have the hypoglycemic effect that, that can be bring about in immediately. So these are the things that we have to um, uh, incorporate into that. There are many more uh, surprises that are hidden in our Agatandra text that we, if you just go on and explore it, you can come up with. I'm not saying that, you know, what the modern systems have been or already implemented by coupling the medicines like insulin with the bile acid or like uh, in, in treatment of uh, Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, they have got also coupling with um, levodopa. It is not that. It is not that we are saying that it is uh, what they are using is already there in our. It is not that. I am saying that we have missed the opportunity. We could have used it in in many other diseases. You just imagine the toughest of the neuro neurodegenerative diseases that you are treating, with you know very scarce drugs. We have got only the grida preparations that can at least uh, pass our uh, blood brain barrier to a little extent. We cannot say that it is very effective in delivery. Why, why can't we just modify our, our formulations? Why can't we? Because that is why we say that the Agatha is definitely the torchbearer of uh, 
Ayurveda because we can Im imply many things from it. We can imbibe many things from it. Okay. Now we have uh, some, uh, I'm coming to the end of my presentation, we have got uh, some specific treatment modalities that are being described as in, uh, in, uh, in our Chaturvim Shadubakrama. We have got Ubadana, which is being done as the last resort because we are creating the Kagabada and all. Uh, it has got its own um, um, mode of action, which I'm not going to explain here because of uh, scarcity of time. And the uh, the name of this particular webinar, the Hridayavarana, this is very aptly named, I would say, this particular webinar. Hridayavarana is the con the the big concept in sign visual treatment because you know Hridaya, as the name implies, is not for the anatomical structure of heart. It is can be said being Hridaya being the Mahamarma in our body, the all the vital points can be considered as uh, Hridaya here in case of uh, Visha. Because the Visha is affecting all the Marma Cheda is the, the very important quality of Tishna and Vikashi type of drugs. So in that uh, instance, we can say that Hridayavarana is actually the protecting of all the vital centers, of, including our stomach, all the vital points. And we are using uh, what is known as the uh, Gruda medium or the lipid medium to bring about it. It has its own significance. And here, I just want to mention about a, a particular treatment uh, modality known as the Uta, which was developed in Kerala, Vishachagilsa. It is nothing but we will chew some drugs uh, by three persons will equally chew a drug. And uh, the pa patient will be lying when, when he is unconsciously lying in the bed. Uh, the three of these will be blowing uh, with chewing this drug, blowing in the sense that blowing with your breath to the both the ears and on the vertex. So three persons will be simultaneously and synchronously uh, blowing the, the wind or the, their breath to the both the ears as well as the vertex for 150 times. And it is said that you know any person who is lethargic, unconscious, he will rise up immediately. So it has got some of uh, some way of absorbing the drug molecules through the membranes in the ear and also through the bregma or the vertex. So this is another very important, and we said that we used to see that you know when Ayurveda Shala had the snake bite treatment, we the experts over there used to say that the physicians, very old physicians, who used to treat the they used to say that whenever you do uh, the Uta Chigilsa, uh, they have seen that you know the respiratory complications are very rare in them. You know we we never tried, nobody studied about it. But their experience, they have said that, you know, whenever an Uta Chigilsa is done in, uh, in, in, in renovated patients, they never developed a, a chest congestion or a pneumonia or any other breathing difficulty, never. So respiratory system has been boosted up by this particular system. So the, the, that's all this I want to tell you right now, because, you know, this is a very vast topic. You can contact a, a, a webinar, national level webinar on this single subject of Visha Chigilsa itself. So concluding that, I, I just say that there are immense potential still, still to be unearthed from the field of Agatandra. So I wish each and every one of you a very uh, best of uh, everything. And uh, I, I wish that Almighty give you the strength and capacity to dwell, study uh, in depth into the uh, treatment modalities uh, mentioned in Agatandra. And I thank once again the, uh, uh, organizers as well as the SVM Ayurveda College for giving me this opportunity. Thank you, one and all. Thank you. Thank you, sir. It's a very wonderful presentation with the initiation to the Agatantra concept for practice. So it's a really very informative presentation. So we have a few questions. Can we take this, sir? Oh, sure, sure. So you talked about those tablets which have been um, it be, it been explained with the Sanjeevini Agada like that. In, yeah. They are in tablet form. How they are being given to the patient? Is it there in uh, it is in tablet form? form. It is in tablet form, and usually um, we give it either um, in milk or in any of the quada. With quada. Yeah, yes. a mixed in quada. Ah, with the quota, the tablets are easily yes, uh, absorbed. Yes, yes. 
uh, actually speaking, you know, when you say about um, when, when you take other specialties like high chickles and all, we say that, you know, um, yoga raja gugulu vadi, uh, kaishwara gugulu vadi, like that we say. But when we come to agatandra, we say that it's agada. Because actually, there is no uh, type of uh, formulations that are being mentioned. Because, you know, we, we, we are for, for our benefit only, we are making it into tablet form. Actually, what uh, traditional Vishwavaita uses, use I know, they will have these uh, uh, grinders, you know, in that they will be continuously grinding these medicines. And they will not make into any tablet form or any churna form, anything. It is that, you know, they will be grinding continuously. As it goes uh, being utilized, you know, they will add new medicines and again grind. So uh, the particle size will be reduced very, 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 very much. So that, you know, when we give it, you know, we will have very immediate results. So Agada formulations as such does not have any formulations, but for our storage purpose and for our benefit only, we are making it into a tablet. Okay. In traditional, they are using fresh uh, medicines, no, sir. Yeah, they, fresh are, medicine. they used to directly collect and they use, uh, they are more beneficial. Yeah. So, uh, is it? It's and uh, now it is difficult to assess by taking those tablets and yes. practice uh, in other sites in yes. in Karnataka from taking. Ishwari is not well, well, well developed in Karnataka, sir. As we have seen. So, uh -huh. uh, sir. So other Akalpa is okay. What's uh -huh. by, uh, Sorry. Ashwagandha is okay, but other tab medicines are not being available. Okay. So in yeah. one book called that uh, Khagendra Mani Darpana, I have seen the reference of this particular drug. Uh, that is why, and uh, in uh, uh, somewhere in Puttur, uh, uh, Aitwa, Dr. Aital is uh, one traditional uh, Vishravaita is there. And he is also using that. So we visited that. That is why from that experience. Uh, that, that, side, that side it is very uh, available, very much available. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. In Anupadesha, they are very good. Yeah, it's very difficult. Huh. I know, huh. I know. Participants, if you have any questions, you can ask through chat box or you can unmute yourself and ask the questions directly. Later, we have your email ID. Ah, sure, sure. Email our email ID also. Sir. Anytime, anytime. Please, sir. No, um, no more questions, sir. Thank you so much. It's a very informative session, and it's an initiating session for the future budding doctors for knowing um, for preparation or for knowing uh, different aspects of other tantra treatment aspects. Thank you very much, madam. So we we'll go. We we'll move to the vote of thanks, sir. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon to all. Today we have completed the 15th day session of 26th of a national webinar series of One Rudha 2020. Today we had a very wonderful session of snake bite management in Ayurveda. Are we wrong at this era of antivenom by Dr. Benil P. Professor, Department of Agatantra, BPSV, Ayurved College, Kotekal, Kerala. It's the end of session with a vote of thanks. I myself, Dr. Manjura, from Agatantra Department, SPM AMC, Ilkal. It's my foremost privilege to gratitude His Holiness, Sri Mani Pragurmanta Swamiji, has even started with the Swamiji blessing. Thank you, Swamiji, for your blessings. I thank our SVM VV Sangha's chairman, Sri M.G. Patan Shatter, sir. Thank you, sir. I thank Secretary Sri Dilip Devgirkar, sir, and all board members for providing an opportunity and support to organize this webinar. Thank you, thank you, one and all. I thank to our today's guest speaker, Dr. Benil P., Professor, Department of Agatantra, VPSV Ayurved College, Kotekal, Kerala. Sir had took a talk on snake bite management in Ayurveda. Are we wrong at this era of anti venom? It is an initiating uh, session, sir. Thank you, thank you so much for your sharing valuable knowledge. I thank 
our event president dr kc das principal cmo thank you so much i thank to our event organizer dr lk patdar sir associate professor and hod department of agrikultura uh, sbm amc for organizing and uh, for organizing these sessions thank you sir thank you so much i thank an event coordinator for being a part of today's session thank you i extend thanks to all the pg ug scholars and uh, and all the teachers of other institutes especially vpsv ayurved college kottakal kerala and spm mc vikal and the participants who have been watched in youtube thank you lastly i thank all the people who have been directly and indirectly helped for conducting and organizing the rudarna 2020 thank you thank you one and all shall we end the session sir thank you thank you very much thank you